Hello, welcome to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. My name is Joe and this is Lisa. And we're coming to you today to talk a little bit about our adventure in Ecuador. We're retired farmers from Texas and uh, we have uh, retired here to grow our own food and just enjoy the good life. Today, we want to talk about the wonderful things that we love about Ecuador living here in Vilcabamba and some of the things that we find that aren't so wonderful. So we'll start off, we got a list here. What's the first thing? Inexpensive living. Inexpensive living. Things here are cheap. What, what all is really cheap here? Well, you can go to the Mercado on the weekend and get about a week's worth of produce for between five and ten dollars. Yes, and uh, meat here, like beef, would run about three dollars a pound, roughly. Um, it's a grass-fed beef. It's not real tender always, sometimes it is. But yeah, it's very, very inexpensive. Um, electricity here, we have three houses on our property. Our electricity runs about $75 a month. Our water is about maybe five dollars a month for water, um, and then we use uh, bottled LP propane gas, uh, natural gas, I guess you call it, mm -hmm. and that's a, a tank of that's like three dollars, two seventy-five. So it's really cheap. You know, we use a couple of those a month. Um, we don't use air conditioning here, especially on a day like today. We are in the windy season, so uh, it's very, very cool and windy most of the time. So what's expensive here? Cars. Cars are very expensive. Cars are expensive and shipping items into the country can be expensive. Yes, typically somewhere between eight to $10 a pound to ship something into Ecuador. Um, sometimes there'll be a, a tax associated with that depending on the item, but most of the time there's, there's not. Electronic items, there's usually taxes on that. Um, so it's kind of expensive to ship something over here. Laptops, for example, you can buy laptops here all day long. Uh, we bought tablets here mm -hmm. and uh, there's a better quality available, I think, in the U.S. on some things. Uh, but they have pretty much everything here in the way of electronics. They a do. A few things they don't. Yeah, you get different name brands than what you're used to in the States, but um, still pretty comparable value. All right, so um, well, our overall living expense is less than $1,000 a month. Of course, we do own our property, but mm -hmm. I would say somewhere around 600 to $800 a month, and we live pretty good for that. Internet would be the other thing that's uh, yes. expensive. Internet, um, we have unlimited internet here for $39 a month, and it's very, very fast. Now, I've just turned 65, so I get a discount since I'm an old guy now. So internet will now cost me $27 a month. So they do uh, respect the older people here and they give us a lot of discounts. We're excited about that. Mm -hmm. What's next on the list? The climate. Yeah, the climate here is the most idyllic climate on the planet, I think. Don't you? I do. You don't have the big swing, so it's a little bit to get used to the fact that there's no air conditioning, no heating, because you don't need it. That's right. It's pretty much um, here in, at where we live on the mountain above Vilcabamba. Uh, we're about 75 during the day and, you know, somewhere around 60 degrees at night. So, you know, a nice warm blanket is all you need. And once in a blue moon, um, we'll get a warm day where it's 80 degrees, but that's not very often. It's pretty steady, the same temperature. Um, there are days when the wind's blowing a lot and it's kind of misty, rainy, and you think it's kind of cool, but uh, there's not that many days like that. We, we don't really like the dry season, at least I don't, because of the wind here, and that's just a few months out of the year. Uh, this year, it hasn't been really dry. We're still getting rain. Yeah, we're still getting rain. We're just now starting to, to get dry here. Mm -hmm. So we love the climate. We don't like the windy, dry season. Um, but that's only in the Vilcabamba area. They don't particularly have the windy season in other parts of the country. What's next on our list? Clean water. We have very, very good water here. Our drinking water comes from the Podocarpus National Park, which is 
oh, another 10 miles above us, and um, it comes down to us. It's not treated. Um, it doesn't need to be treated. It's pure water. We do um, have some rainwater collection on the property we're using for our gardens and things um, because we do get charged for the water um, that comes in from the, uh, from the park. It's very, very cheap, as we said, on average about 5 to $10 a month. And along with the clean water, well, the clean water, the con, is the interrupts um, with the weather conditions and landslides and stuff like that. The water does go out here. Um, we've had it out as much as a week, um, but fortunately we have backup tanks and a pump so we don't experience the outages. But, uh, you know, the landslides tend to, to break the water lines in places and uh, construction uh, tends to do that as well. So there are those inconveniences, the water will go out. So you must have a backup system here. And a backup system is, you know, a couple 2,500 liter tanks and um, some sort of a pump to be able to pump. And so we have that system in place. So it's become much easier. And after clean water is clean air. Extremely clean air up where we are. It is, it is fantastic. No chemtrails. No chemtrails. You don't see planes fly over here, and we just don't have chemtrails. Um, probably the one thing that we do have in terms of air pollution is um, the local farmers like to burn off their fields, mm -hmm. and, and that can be a little disruptive. It's uh, that smoke, you know, is will kind of hang in the air sometimes, but usually within a couple of days we get a nice wind come through and blow it out of here. Yeah, it depends on where you live. Where we live, we don't have a lot of the smoke from the burning, but on the other side of town, they have more because there's more agricultural area over there. Okay, what's next on our list? The next thing that we really like is the diversity of people. Yeah, we just had some visitors to our farm, a lovely couple who had come to visit Ecuador about three years ago and they stayed with us and rented our casita and um, they stayed about a week and now they're full-time residents here in in uh, the Vilcabamba area they've been here several years yeah and uh, I think they're going on three yeah just wonderful people good Christian people and uh, nice people to have around we have <coughs> excuse me we have made some friends here and uh, have made some really good friends this is a community that cares about each other. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, the con that we have is distance from family. Yeah, that's that's one of the problems here is we left family and friends back in the States and we do miss them all greatly. We have not been able to travel um, because of the pandemic, etc. And um, our refusal to go along with the um, with the vaccine. We, we think that that is absolutely not what they say it is. And so we're not going to do that. Hopefully in the next six months, some of this will um, open up and we'll be able to travel to see our, our grandson and our family in Texas. We miss everybody dearly and that's hard. So that is a consideration when you move to Ecuador is leaving friends and family behind. Um, it's not easy to do. Um, but our friends and here have become family to us, and uh, we all look at it that way. We all try to take care of each other and do the things that a family would do. True. That's the end of my list. Oh, that's the end of the list. Mm -hmm. I will say that um, things that I'm disappointed in here would be um, restaurants here in the Vilcabamba area. They're not great. It's not the best tasting food you've ever had. Um, some places are cheap. Um, the Ecuadorian restaurants, you can still get lunch for $3, $3.50. But I, there's, no, there's not a restaurant in town that I'm really crazy about. In Loja, there's a couple of good restaurants that we really mm -hmm. like. And in Cuenca, there's even more. Yeah. The Cuenca. bigger the city, the more diversity in that type of food. So Cuenca is the third largest city in Ecuador. And... Um, we love to go there and stay in what they call um, the historic area. Um, and we stay in the historic center 
and uh, we stay right where one of our friends has a really nice restaurant there, Cuban friend of ours, and we love to go there and eat. Matter of fact, we'll be going there this week. And I think Cuenca has a lot to offer in the way of restaurants mm -hmm. and shopping and things like that. Yeah, as with all places, bigger cities have more of those type of things to offer. We do go to the city of Loja, which is about a 45 minute drive for us and uh, just to the north of us. And Loja has um, some several big shopping, uh, uh, what would you call them, HEB like stores? Sure. Similar to a, you know, a large shopping store, large grocery store. Um, so you can get things there that maybe you can't get in Vilcabamba. You know, um, things that come from the U.S., spices, you know, special flavorings, things like that. Yeah. You buy pretty much everything else we need right here in town. Yeah, the in town, they have a lot of the items that we normally would use, but not in large quantities. So... If you want something more than just a couple servings, you would need to go to a larger city to get some more in bulk. True. And in Loja, we have all the medical care we could possibly need. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's everything done there, even some heart surgery. However, Cuenca has even better hospitals, and, and they do heart surgeries like mine, where you need a mitral valve or something installed. They can do that in Cuenca. And they've actually done um, heart transplants in Quito. Uh, mm -hmm. Quito is the capital. So they've actually done heart transplants there. I've had um, a surgery here in Loja, went very well. I've had several eye surgeries in Cuenca that also went extremely well. Um, all of uh, my medical experiences here have all gone really well. Um, our dentist is a all natural dentist mm -hmm. and um, he does a marvelous job at tooth cleaning, etc. And that's the kind of thing you hear. You can kind of hear about dentists here that are both ways. Some are good and some are bad. Well, I think that's anywhere in the world. People have their favorites and people have the people they want to stay away from. So that's medical industry. It's, it's any professional industry you come across. You're going to have those that you like it more and those that you like less. I would say the cost of medical and dental here is probably less than a quarter of the cost of the U.S. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At least Much less, less than a quarter. For example, I had a hernia surgery with a one-night stay in the hospital, and it was $1,100. Um, of course, you have to pay them before they let you leave the hospital. <laughs> you do, but you can't really complain at the price when you've come from somewhere like the States where it's so expensive. And health insurance here um, is kind of all over the map. It mm -hmm. started about $39 a month. Um, the government insurance program here they call IESS, and that is about $70 a month. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on an insurance that will cover me in private care uh, up to about $140,000, which would be my heart transplant, essentially. Yeah. And that insurance cost me about $53 a month. Mm -hmm. So insurance is very inexpensive here. Um, most people here don't have car insurance because they can't afford it. So, but car insurance probably five to six hundred dollars a year. Uh, but for it car costs insurance. so little to get your car repaired if something happens. I mean, it's very reasonably priced. Yeah, body work, things like that are very reasonable. Paint jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, things like batteries for cars are a little bit expensive. Um, tires, pretty comparable to the U.S. Um, I got a nice set of tires for our car that's, you know, a 40,000 kilometer tire. Um, and they ran about $600 for entire set. And that's installed and balanced and ready to go. All right, well, there's a few of the things that we love about Ecuador and a few things that we don't love quite so much, um, but for the most part, we have no regrets. Do you have any no, regrets? No. I we, couldn't imagine being anywhere else right now. We love living here. We hope you'll consider it. Um, land prices are continuing to go up, um, but there's still a lot of good deals to be had here. Mm -hmm. It just depends on where you want to live in Ecuador. Um, some places are cheaper than others. Right in downtown Bilcabamba, 
it is uh, we're seeing a lot of increase in prices yeah um, out 15 20 minutes outside of town a lot of great deals to be had on on a lot of land two three four hectare minimum um, you can you can get for probably a really good price still yeah I, you just have to be um, just like you would anywhere else in the world be cautious of what you're paying for well, it's not paradise, but it's the closest thing that we found on the planet. And uh, we're very, very happy here. Hope you'll all come and visit us very soon. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.